How's it going, everybody? Welcome back to City Skylines. Welcome back to Plazas and Promenades, an expansion that I named properly today. And welcome back to the soon-to-be city of Nerdholm. If you didn't catch the last episode, then you're going to have missed the reconstruction of the center of our city, or soon-to-be city. Cedar Mole now has a coastline, it has a key, it has a park area around our main city hall, and it just looks, I think, a little bit better. And so that is where we're going to start today. Now, don't worry, I know your eyes are probably rolling a little bit thinking that we're going to have another episode dedicated to just building this place and detailing it. Don't worry, we're not going to be spending all of our time here, but we are going to be trying to deal with with some of the issues in Cedar Mall, such as the crime that's starting to pop up just over there on the left and over here on the right. So the way I think I'm going to deal with that is by very simply going into this tile and removing the zoning and the buildings. Because I think what I can do with a little bit of uh, work towards fixing the uh, terrain paint right there and over there as well, I think what I can go ahead and do is essentially use this tile as a space for the emergency services. We have $117,000. We can absolutely afford it. So why don't we go ahead and get ourselves, let's start with a police department. And we could go with the regular police station. I don't think we have anything in here other than the historical police station, which admittedly, it would look quite nice in here. I wonder... Can I, by any chance, get the historical library to fit in here? I sort of can, and I don't necessarily dislike it. I might be about to change my mind on this area, but... Hmm. No, I think for the time being, what we'll do is we'll stick with the standard one. We'll go for the police station, the European-style police station, though, just to be a little bit different. And then next to that... I want to go ahead and get my hands on, well, we could go for the regular style firehouse, but I do sort of like the idea of this style of firehouse, although it does look a little bit out of place, doesn't it? I'll tell you what, let's go for the regular style firehouse right about, let's say there, and then we'll go for medical, and I suppose we'll go for the actual medical clinic, sort of European style-ish, and... Actually, what we can do is put it right there and then move the firehouse, not to there, but to there. And I think that works a little bit better. I think that sort of ties the area together. It gives us this corner here that I can play with and maybe put a plaza into. And I think it looks okay. In fact, I do want to go in and see if I can get my hands on some kind of plaza. This is the pedestrian areas tab, so let's take a little look and see, I don't know why I'm looking here, it's this type that I need to be looking at. Uh, let's see what we can do in here. We have a food truck plaza, we have an ice cream stand plaza, and we have the small fountain plaza, which I think looks really, really good there. I like that a lot, although, to be fair, we do have the fountain plaza right there in the middle. Although I think it's okay. I think, I think we'll just leave it as is, and the one little detail change that I wanna make here is I want to go and I want to get myself a hedge. I want to get this one right here and I want to make sure it's a single brush size because I want to put it uh, right about there and I want to put it, let's see, right about there. Oh, that was a, no, it was a good click. That was fine. The game sort of hitched a little bit, but that's okay. And right about there. And that just divides the medical clinic and the police station. And I think that looks pretty good. It's very, very simple, but it does the job. It'll provide policing, medical, and fire coverage to Cedar Mole, and that's all I need to worry about. So, the next thing I want to do, it has to do with the buses. And that change is a very, very simple one. I just wanted to add some bus lines to 
Cedar Mall. I wanted to get some buses moving around here, and previously, I hadn't really been able to do that, but with a very simple addition, we can now do that. Because, obviously, we have some more roads, we have more space to play with, and as such, we have a bus line that comes in on one side and goes out on the other. It gives us a good connection for the city sensor, and it also lets me play around with node controller a little bit, because these corners right here originally were very meh looking. They didn't look great at all, and to be honest, they could still look a little bit better. I think they really need to get some bollards, and fortunately, in plazas and promenades, I almost got the name wrong again, uh, there are some bollards that we can play with, and I can very simply go to this point and this point, and uh, if I control click, I can just drag these guys out a little bit to line up with the curb right about, say, well, I think that's probably good enough. I'm never going to look at this place in that much detail, so something a little bit like that. We'll go a little bit something, something like, uh, like this and drag that out as well. And we can just get some bollards along the uh, the road corners there. And I think that just looks so good. I think it just ties the area together, makes it feel a little bit more official. And uh, it works very nicely to just remind us that this is a pedestrian zone, first and foremost. The vehicles are kind of guests here, which sounds very pretentious. <laughs> that sounds, it's almost a Bob Ross uh, vibe that I'm channeling there. It's not intentional, but... Uh, well, you know, every pedestrian area needs uh, needs some happy little bollards from time to time, so <laughs> so there we go. We've got some bollards, and every set of bollards needs a friend. So, we have two sets of bollards at each corner, and I think it just, when you zoom in, it does, it does bring it together a little bit. So, that gives us that, <laughs> sorry, I'm a little, a little distracted by the, uh, the unintentional surprise Bob Ross that came up there. Um, <laughs> that's genuinely not intentional that was um that did sort of <laughs> i mean i leaned into it obviously but yeah that's um anyway moving on uh <laughs> that's fine let's uh let's go ahead and just tidy up a couple more spots around here before we uh, move on towards growing the population i i want to make sure that this is set up properly with uh, priorities and that this is set up properly and so is this set up properly with priorities as well just to make sure that everything around here can flow the way that it should i also want to make sure that lanes are set up correctly so what i'm gonna do is go in with the six lane road with median and i'm just gonna put it right about there and i'm gonna put one right about there and what i can do is use the lane arrows with a control click to just tidy up those intersections that little bit same with the roundabout as well just making sure that they are all as neat as they can possibly be. And that should help traffic wonderfully, I would imagine. So that gives us a slightly better cedar mole. So my next step, or for my next trick, either or, I, I do want to grow the population. So let's go ahead and set ourselves out a new sort of neighborhood idea right about here. And I'm going to say right about here as well. Now, I am going to say that these neighborhoods are going to be somewhat grid-based. And the reason for that is because this is eventually going to be downtown. This is eventually going to be a lot of high-density stuff. This is going to be the heart of the city. So, we are going to have high-rises and apartment buildings and all of that. But as we get away towards Middle District, which, by the way, I did say we're getting rid of at some point, and we absolutely are... But as we start coming out here, we're going to see more curves, more angles. We're going to see some more roads probably cutting through. I might even get a road coming off this corner of the roundabout and sort of coming straight out here. But just for now, just so we can get the population that little bit higher towards 7,500, which is when we get high density buildings, let's go ahead and do a little something something to give us some space to play with. And so, with a quick sweep of the camera, we have ourselves some space that we can have a little bit of fun with. On the left, we have Jones Park, and on the right, we have Mayfair. A couple of names that are a little bit generic, perhaps. I just, I don't know why Jones Park was in my head, and I was thinking about London, and the only thing I could think of was Mayfair. So, we 
have these two spaces and we also have these spaces either side of our main avenue and what i'm thinking i'm gonna do is continue these spaces down and either side of this avenue create a giant park because i think that would look awesome i think that would look really really good to have this huge tree lined road this tree lined promenade this this park leading all the way from the highway towards city hall now i will say i don't love the idea that the highway connects directly to this we might and probably do want to change that up a little bit but that's something we can get to in the not too distant future traffic's already starting to get a little bit busy down here so perhaps we do want to look into that but like i said not too distant future we will absolutely get there now while i was laying out these roads i did also come up to this little section here by cedar mall and i decided to go ahead and create this space because what i want to do at some stage is get the cathedral which is a half million dollar building but i think it would look amazing in this space with its back to the water just relatively close to city hall I think it'll look really good. We just need a half a million dollars. And part of the way that we can get that money is actually by taking a look at Cedar Mall, which currently costs $4,414. Now, it's a, it's got a size of 7,064 cells, but I can assure you we're not using all of those. So what I can do, and this is something that was suggested in the comments, I believe, on the last episode, is go in and essentially take the pedestrian zone off of any road that isn't really essential and by doing this i will cut down on the fees associated with the pedestrian zone so for example if i take the pedestrian zone off of this road up here i well i mean it's not really needed there's nothing on that road so take it off, take it off of there take it off of this road as well and if we go look at it we're down to two thousand nine hundred and $65. So needless to say, we're saving a little bit of money by not having uh, roads zoned that we're not necessarily using for the pedestrian space. So with that said, let's go ahead and turn our attention to Jones Park and to Mayfair, because I have some ideas for these spaces that I'm, I'm quite excited about. Uh, because what I'd like to do is actually get an actual park area into the middle of both of these now the problem is we are a little bit low on money right now so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna go ahead and we're going to zone a bunch of commercial along all of these avenues the way i always do and we're gonna just bring it around this entire space up to about there i'm leaving this space open because the idea is that this will be a park and so on this side we'll do exactly the same thing bringing commercial through to here we're not going to put it in there and actually we're not going to put it in there either because that is a park space uh, and then right here we go across like so and the rest of all of that is going to be residential so let's fill up all of you and fill all of you and then on this side it's very simple we fill all of you and we fill all of you and that will give us money but the problem is that we are a little bit low on water and a little bit low in sewage. So let's get out ahead of that. Let's put another water tower right about here, getting very, very close to the pollution, but we should be okay. And we can get ourselves another eco inland water treatment plant. And in this case, I'm thinking I'm just going to put it right about there and that should be fine. And we can just connect it straight down to the pipes that should deal with water that should deal with sewage. And we should now see I think some water, any water availability. Hello. Is it going to, is it going to jump up a little bit? There it is. So now that's working. Sewage is working and we should see some buildings popping up. Absolutely. Okay. So let's let this space build up a little bit and then let's turn our attention to, I suppose, getting some parks in here because that's the main feature of these spaces. What's also interesting about this is that I could, if I really wanted to, I could go in here and do some interesting things with pedestrian streets. 
So if I go and get cobblestones, for example, and I go and I get the small cobblestone, cobblestone pedestrian street with trees, I could do this right here. Now, the problem with doing that is that if anything builds on this road, it's going to complain. The buildings will be going nuts. The owners are going to be saying, hey, I'm not in a pedestrian zone. What's going on here? So I need to place something on this road to stop that from happening. And very simply, I could go and get carports and just do this. And suddenly nothing can build on that road, but we have a nice little way through here. And that's actually why I have all of these, uh, these connections the way they are, because I can go ahead and do this right here. And then I can go and get a couple of little carports like this. And suddenly we have a direct shot through into Cedar Mall. I'm not going to connect every single one of these roads, but that is very much why I, I, I did this. Uh, so for example, right here, if I turn off Anarchy, we're going to go straight through. And we're going to go straight through right here as well. Oh, that was, that's not straight through at all. Uh, we're going to go straight through right there. And we'll just go ahead and put the uh, little path back in there, I think, just to fix that up a little bit. So there we go. And that gives us some more connections that are a little bit fancier, a little bit different to uh, what we had before. And you can actually see that building there. I don't know if you caught that. It was complaining about being on a pedestrian street without being in a pedestrian zone. So that gives us some great connections. Uh, we'll do the same thing right here. And we'll do the same thing. You know what? We'll do the same thing on all of these. Well, no, we're not going to do that, actually, because that'd be way too many carports. Uh, we'll do it on... We'll do it on this one, actually, is what we'll do. We'll fill up these spaces. And uh, I could probably use something other than carports to do this, but... It's, it's easy. It's, uh, it's, it's simple. And, uh, I think right here as well is where we can go ahead and connect straight across. And, uh, yeah, I think right there as well. So let's get just a couple of, uh, carports around that. How much are these things? Oh, they're free. Okay. What do they do? Oh, they, they, they are purely cosmetic. Zero cost, zero pollution, zero entertainment, zero noise pollution. Okay. That's totally fine by me. So nothing's going to be building on those. They are connections through to these districts. And we are just over 100 sims away from 5,000 total population. We're, oh, I saw that. We did get into the 900s there very, very briefly. 904. Okay. Should be any second now. We can get our hands on the oil power plant. And that gets rid of all of our problems. Because if I remember right, the coal power plant by default generates 40 megawatts of power. The oil plant does 120. So with an increased budget, it's going to be generating more than both of my existing coal power plants. So we can get rid of both of those and go exclusively into the oil business, which, yeah, well, that's, uh, that's you know, you know, maybe green energy at some point is uh, maybe a direction for this city. I feel like Nerdholm uh, probably could be a, a pioneer of, <laughs> of green energy, but we'll see. We're also... <laughs> I'm happening to notice uh, more complaints popping up and the population declining a little bit. So I don't know if we're going to get to um, to 5,000 uh, sims before people start leaving. Hmm. Maybe we do. Uh, <laughs> maybe we need to. Uh, can I? I can't increase the budget any higher, can I? It's. Oh, wait, I can. Oh, well, that's. <laughs> Suddenly things are a lot less dramatic when I can actually afford to uh, increase the budget a little bit. Interestingly, we're still not generating enough power. So we're actually still going to have the complaints, but... Oh, wow, that did nothing. <laughs> okay, you know what? I might have got a little carried away. Let's, um... Let's bite the bullet, and let's just build another coal power plant for now. We'll put it right there, and that should help us get up to uh, 5,000 sims, and that'll hopefully stop... And it has stopped all of those complaints. Let's get rid of these buildings that are abandoned. And there, immediately, immediately, we have 5,000 sims. Okay. Right. I'll tell you what we're going to do then. We're going to get rid of you, get rid of you, and get rid of you. And simply put, we are going to go ahead and get a single oil power plant right there. 
And I'm going to just change up the road a little bit because I like doing this. I like the road with the median for uh, buildings like this. And then the road with the sidewalks right there. And we can go ahead and say that this is a little bit of industrial zoning. And if we look at power generation, it should... It is 150 with the three coal plants. With the one oil plant, I think it's uh, it'll it'll settle unless it is just 150, in which case, fantastic. That's that's perfect. That's all we needed. So power sorted, water sorted, sewage sorted, garbage, meh. But that's okay. Uh, death care, I'm pretty sure is healthcare is good. Death care is doing okay as well so we're doing okay other than traffic but that's to be honest that's to be expected so we'll not worry too much about the traffic situation right now we'll uh we'll figure that out so now that these neighborhoods are mostly built up i want to go ahead and turn my attention to willow garden and to mill park because they are going to be parks, essentially. Ooh, what's going on here? What are you complaining about? Not in pedestrian area. I... You were not supposed to be in a pedestrian area? That's a little bit weird. Are you trying to... Uh, <laughs> not really sure what's going on there, to be quite honest. Not really sure why that complaint was there at all. No one else has any complaints, so... Let's just bulldoze that building, let that tile rebuild, and everything should be fine. Now, like I said, I want to go ahead and turn these into actual parks and gardens. So, let's go into the Parks and Plazas tool. Let's go to City Park. And how big are you? You won't go central. So, we're going to go with the uh, small park main gate. And uh, I suppose... Well, I suppose we have a question of where this thing is going to go. And I guess right about there and that gives us a bunch of things that we can play with which is fantastic but we'll do a secondary gate right beside it and then down at this end maybe a gate right there and we could maybe do let's see we could do another gate perhaps right about there and that'll give us a decent amount of access although perhaps we do want to do one right about here and one right about there and that'll line up with the two paths that we have right here as well as down here as well, since we have two paths on that side. And to keep this nice and simple, what I'm thinking of doing is just having this essentially be uh, relatively boring, to be quite honest. I'm not really going to go too crazy with uh, how the paths are laid out. It is going to be quite uh, quite straightforward, I think is a, a fair way of describing this, uh, this park right now. Uh, lazy would be another way of describing this park that I'm... Uh, I'm willing to accept lazy. I'm gonna be honest with you. I uh, I'll accept that as a, uh, as a as a judgment of my uh, my current park design. It's not exactly inspired, but it's okay. It'll it'll do the job. Now I do, of course, want to surround this place with uh, with some fences. And while I do that, I was actually reading a comment on the last episode that asked a pretty good question. And the question was simply, why does it seem like I over-design certain spaces? And I thought it was a really interesting comment because I, I've always been aware that I, I do this. I've always been aware that I will sometimes uh, go a little bit overboard with trees, for example. I think trees would be the big one. If you've seen me play City Skylines before, you'll be aware of just how over the top I can go when it comes to uh, to placing trees in my in my cities. I'll often say that I'm using trees to hide my crimes, which is true. But I got thinking about it, and I did write a reply to this comment because I thought it was a fair point, and I thought it was I thought it was a good comment. I quite liked it. I thought it you know gave me an opportunity to think a little bit, and I realized where my tendency to over design comes from, and it comes from The Sims. If you've ever seen me build anything in The Sims 4, especially, especially back when I did do some, uh, I think I did some time lapses in The Sims 4 once upon a time, I always talk about making places feel like they're lived in. I always talk about making places feel like they haven't just been built right now. They're not brand new. They've had people living in them. There's clutter. There's mess. 
that's what I like to do with details in city skylines. So I like to make places feel busy. I like to make places feel a little bit overgrown, like they're just about to have a gardener come out and tidy them up a little bit. Because I just think it adds a little something something, perhaps, to uh, different areas. And the other point of the comment was that I like to fence places in a lot. That part, I couldn't tell you. I don't really know why I, uh, I like to fence places in. I just, I guess, like to have, uh, <laughs> like to have boundaries on, uh, on a lot of what I do in terms of, um, well, real life and also uh, in terms of city skylines and parks and plazas and uh, promenades and all that good stuff. So th I just thought it was a really good question. I thought it was a really interesting comment. And uh, I figure since we're building a little park right now, it was a good time to sort of address it in a video and be like, hey, I know I've already <laughs> responded to your comment, but we'll talk about it in a video as well because I thought it was really good. And so this, I think, looks pretty good for Willow Garden. I decided that the middle of it would essentially just be a giant plaza, and I did want to go ahead and put in some decals, but the only ones I could use were vanilla city skylines, non-plazas, and promenades decals, because the plaza and promenades decals are still doing that weird thing with the terrain, so we use these ones, and I think it looks okay. I, it's not the most detailed plaza, but it kind of gets the point across. And I think once we have some high-rise buildings in here, I think it's going to look pretty good. So that is Willow Garden. As for Mill Park, we're going to go a little bit more straightforward. We're going to go a little bit simpler. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a park entrance here. I'm going to put a park entrance right here. And I suppose what I could do is... Ooh. Now, I might need to do this slightly differently. Uh, let's put a park entrance right there and move this one to here. And then what we can do is go ahead and get a side entrance. Let's see. Let's go for here. 
because we can. Let's go for here and we will just sort of do them all across from each other. And so what we'll do is connect these guys the entire way around. This guy down to here is going to be a little bit weird looking, but that's probably okay. And, uh, well, in saying that, I'm going to need to figure out how to do this properly. So let's grab some nodes. And there isn't a node segment in the middle of, uh, of this right now. So what I'm going to need to do is try and line this up a little bit. So I need uh, this to there. I need to bulldoze that section of path. And now I can grab you and make you the same height as that road. And uh, yeah, it's not perfect. It's, <laughs> it's definitely not perfect. But I think I think I can maybe get away with it. Uh, I'm going to need to turn collisions off, though. So we'll turn this off. We'll go in and get ourselves the fence and essentially just bring this back. We'll turn off guidelines, bring it up to there and then bring it over to here and bring it to there. And I guess that's OK. Although I, what I could do is something like this. I'm wondering if I can maybe get away with a nice curved section like that. And I think I can. I think that looks pretty good. So let's go ahead and just connect the rest of this together, get the fences around all of this space, and then figure out what we're doing for the uh, the angled corner here. Oh, that's not what I wanted at all. Let's bring you over to the corner and then up to there. We'll bring you to here and you to there. And I guess what we do is very, very simply, we grab the node and bring it forward to here, grab this node and bring it forward to there, and that looks okay. Now we just connect the rest of it together once again up to uh, right about there. And now that I think about it, I might need to uh, just update some of these to make sure that the the, uh, the collisions are gone. Or sorry, the collisions are on so that uh, nothing's going to be building in any of this space. But that looks okay. I think that'll be, that'll be okay. We can just go ahead and get ourselves the little section of path that's going to connect these, uh, these corners together. So this guy can go to here. This guy can go to here and that can go there. And very simply, we have a uh, mill park. We have people moving around already. We have people that seem to be excited to be here. Now, can I put this in the middle? I absolutely can. But I think what I'm going to do is actually Oh, that's, <laughs> that's a cathedral. That's not what I'm looking for. Uh, I want to go here, and I do want to level this out. I'm going to be honest. I think leveling this out, at least partially, is going to be a very good thing to do. So if I just grab, let's see. If I grab everything up until about this point, not, well, actually, yeah, we will include uh, those segments and just level it to, let's say, that height. It does make things a little bit odd, perhaps. It does make things a little little weird, but it does give me a nice flat space where I can put something like this or where I could put something like this if it fits, which it doesn't. So <laughs> we're not going to be putting that in there at all. Uh, we'll just put the normal uh, plaza right about there. And I think that looks pretty good. Uh, opposite the plaza, we could probably go for a little something something like like this. And then what we can do is the same as we did on this side where we have these uh, benches next to it. We can just have this be a nice little area where people sit down and chill, maybe have a coffee or whatever, you know, read a book. It doesn't matter. Just it's going to be a nice area. It's going to be a, a bit of a getaway from everything in what's going to be a very busy district, I'm sure, because it's going to have super tall buildings and it's going to be really exciting. So just anything that's going to act as uh, as a bit of contrast against all that concrete and steel and you know high rise buildings i think it's going to be fantastic so oh it's already leveled up that's lovely okay let's go ahead let's get ourselves some bushes and we'll just bring them straight that's not the ones i wanted at all bring them straight back like this and i actually will go and put these ones here as well because i think they look quite nice Except if I just move them to about there, what I can do is potentially get rid of that end one. And then maybe, just maybe, bring another strip of these guys along. This might overdo it a little bit, I'll be honest. But I'm willing to uh, willing to give this a shot. 
if I could just grab you and put you there and then maybe grab some of these guys and just sort of go oh maybe I will have to use the uh the prop line tool here just something like that and something like like that it's it's a little bit much isn't it it's a little bit much but I think if I just put like a nice big set of trees or something it'll kind of no, it's a, it's a little bit much. <laughs> it's it's a little bit too much, but uh, I'm going to keep it. I'm going to keep it. I've committed at this point, so let's just uh, just put that right there and just really sell the fact that it's <laughs> someone someone got their nephew to uh, design this part of the park. That's that's what we'll go with there. That's uh, that's definitely someone's nephew did that part. And certainly not me. Uh, we'll do this around here just to nicely sort of enclose this uh, this end of the park sort of uh, make everything a little more official looking and I do kind of like that I think that's I think that's kind of cool uh as for this space just very very simply let's get some uh let's get some tables in here and uh, we'll just do again like I said same thing we did on the other side we'll just dot some tables something like this and uh, I think that looks okay nothing too crazy nothing too fancy maybe uh Maybe a little wooden fence or something to kind of, you know, sell the effect that this is its own little, little shop or something. A little wooden fence right there I think looks quite good. Maybe just moving it back ever so slightly. It seems a little unnecessary, doesn't it? That wooden fence is kind of just there. <laughs> it's, it's definitely, uh, definitely an afterthought right now. Can I, can I get it to feel like it's not an afterthought? Um, that's a little bit better, I think. It's, uh, it's not a whole lot better, but, uh, definitely, definitely a little better. Uh, these, these tables as well, just bring those forward ever so slightly. And I guess that's okay. It's not that bad, is it? It sort of, it sort of ties it together. What if I, uh, what if I brought a little bit? Let's see, can I get you to, uh, can I get this guy to connect? Is that going to be an option? Can I get you to go there? That helps. That, <laughs> that actually helps, I think. It just ties it together, so that's pretty good. As for the rest of this, it's going to be much of the same. So, uh, what we'll do is just put some trees in here, make this place look kind of fancy. I'm not going to bother with a big central plaza. This one's mostly going to just be sort of natural looking. So, once again, just like that, we have what is a very natural looking, perhaps a little bit overgrown looking, perhaps a little bit 1970s looking, park. Just a bunch of trees, a bunch of bushes, a whole bunch of stuff everywhere. It does the job. It's two stars. It'll keep people in Mayfair nicely entertained. And that's two new districts. That's a bus line. But it's not what I set out to do today. It's not 7,500 people, which is what I need to get my hands on. So, what we're going to go ahead and do, I suppose, is take a look at this space up here. Although I'm wondering, did I get my hands on? I did get my hands on the four-lane road. So, let's go ahead and get this upgraded to a four-lane road, because I think that's going to be quite important. And let me just go and grab all of these nodes... And I want to slope that road just a little bit. Well, actually, no, I don't want to do that. I want to uh, have you be the same height as uh, the road to your right. And I want these guys to be a little bit of a slope right there. And then this space is where I guess we're hopefully going to get our hands on another 1,300 people. So that we can finally go ahead and upgrade Cedar Mall and I suppose more of this space into what we're looking for, the wall-to-wall -wall high density buildings. So, let's take a look and see what we can do. We have some two-lane roads with sidewalks. How are we going to bring them through here? That's the real question. Uh, I suppose what we can do is perhaps go in here with, uh, let's try a normal road for a second, and let's go to here, and then let's go ahead and do Actually, you know, I'm going to go a little bit different with this one. 
Also going to turn off tree anarchy as well. Uh, we're going to go and leave a gap around as much of this as we possibly can to try and make this extremely walkable. And it does line up the way I wanted it to. That is absolutely perfect. Uh, now, we are seeing a little bit of weirdness going on in here with the, uh, the terrain paint. So let's just go ahead and take that out of there so that we actually have the sidewalks. I do want cars parking on this road, by the way. I very deliberately used that road here. And then what I'm wanting to do is perhaps, and I think this might be a good idea, is uh, I'm going to bring this road down here, actually. And I'm just going to tidy up that little bit of terrain paint. And then what we'll do is get ourselves a pedestrian road. We'll get this one and bring it through. And we'll do the same here as well because that's going to give us another little crossover point with pedestrian crossings. And I think that's probably for the best. So we can very simply go and get uh, four more of those and, well, four more up here as well, just like so. And that gives us a way across there. And what I should probably do is set this up with some, uh, some priority signs right there. And uh, annoyingly, that actually does stop pedestrians from, uh, from crossing, which... I don't necessarily want to do. In fact, looking at this, it probably should have traffic lights. That's that's probably what that should have. This one here doesn't need them, but that one down there, since that's where pedestrians are going to be crossing, definitely should have some traffic lights. And that's pretty good. That's a way through to the new space. Uh, arguably, we could kind of do the same thing here if we really wanted to, which I feel like I should probably do. Uh, although looking at this, I've used ever so slightly the uh, the wrong rows, but we'll do this and then we'll go and turn uh, turn this guy into that's not what I wanted to do at all. Let's uh, let's try and get this right this time. There we go. So that does give us a little little point there where people can continue to walk through. We'll go and get ourselves a few more carports just like this. And I suppose we can also set this up uh, again. No pedestrian crossings. I actually... I do want pedestrian crossings, and I suppose we do want traffic lights because of it. So that should be okay. That's a couple of ways people can walk from this new district into the existing districts. And then very, very simply, I'm going to be a little bit more lazy with this space. Uh, we'll just do, I suppose, a big old road that goes up there. We'll do a road that comes over here and a road that comes over here. And then we'll leave this space for a park or whatever we feel like doing. Uh, but I do, I do want to get this zoned, I do want to get this built as quickly as we can, but of course, I do also want to get my, uh, my pedestrian paths in here, because even though this district is more, uh, more so, so I can unlock a few more things, I do still want to have my pedestrian paths, I think they're, um, I think they're a great little addition to, uh, to the space, so we'll get them in here, and, uh, we'll of course get one right down here, and right down here as well. Perhaps going uh, over here and the entire way through here as well. And I suppose we could do that as well. And that seems pretty good. That seems like a decent little district. So let's get some pipes surrounding the entire thing. It is most likely at some stage going to be a district that uh, is, is just more high density. It's going to be there for cedar mole but for now we will uh we'll just go ahead and zone it with whatever we got we'll go ahead and zone it with most likely just a bunch of residential except for the outskirts of course which are again going to be commercial so let's fill up all of these spaces the entire way around and i am presented with a bit of a question what do i zone on a small four-lane road oh i hadn't thought of that and I also realize that I might want to, I might want to change this up a little bit because there is going to be a cathedral right there, which makes me think that this, right, this, this can be renovated, I suppose, once we get the money for the cathedral, which is a ways away. So we'll just surround this in commercial. We'll just go ahead and build the entire interior with, uh, with residential and we'll just let it build. And then we should at some stage, hopefully soon get ourselves uh, a grand total of 7,500 people in Nerdhome. Now, unfortunately, all of the new houses 
turned out to not be enough to get the population to where I wanted it to be, so I've had to take drastic action and fill up another chunk of our pedestrian zone with some residential buildings, which has pushed us very close to 7,000 people, but that's still, well, nearly 600 shy of 7,500. So what might be next is expanding Mayfair just a little bit to uh, see if maybe we can uh, just push things over into, uh, into the space that I want. So we'll let that build, we will let this build, and hopefully all of that combined Oh, I hope it's enough to push us to 7,500 people because this is just getting silly. It just is. It's It's gotten to be a little bit silly. There's only so many cinematic shots I can really throw at things before it starts to get a little bit redundant. And uh, I feel like this episode already has been quite a little bit heavy on uh, cinematic shots of buildings just appearing out of the ground. So we will uh, we'll do this old school. We'll just put in a cut until the point where we get... <laughs> <laughs> where we happen to get 7,500 people. And there it is. We've unlocked campus areas, taxation policies, but most importantly, we've unlocked residential wall-to-wall -wall buildings, commercial wall-to-wall -wall buildings, and in general, we've unlocked high-density buildings. Now, here's how I want to go ahead and celebrate. I want to go ahead and uh, I want to get my cathedral, quite frankly. That's that's what I want. So all of this zoning right here can go away because I don't want it at all. None of it, not one bit of it was supposed to be there. It was all going to go away and it's all going to make way for my beautiful, beautiful cathedral. And uh, what I think I'm going to do with the cathedral is I'm going to put it on cobblestone just to be different. So... Let's just go straight across here, and I hope that's good. That looks terrible. <laughs> Actually, I don't know. I don't like the plain grass next to the car. I love the texture of the cobblestone, but uh, hmm, maybe uh, <laughs> maybe we stick. Maybe we stick with uh, with this guy right here. Yeah, that looks a bit better. And then the cathedral itself, half a million dollars, well spent. Oh, that looks beautiful there. It really does. I think that looks absolutely perfect on a, uh, a pedestrian road. That is, that is, that is kind of wonderful. Now, here's what I also want to get my hands on. There is a certain plaza that I'm looking for. It's this one, the Flower Plaza. I want to see, can I get two of these right next to each other? I absolutely can. I think they look pretty great opposite the cathedral. And then back here... Well, back here, I'm not really sure what to place, because I don't think we have anything that's necessarily small enough. Which is a bit of a shame. I suppose if I move the cathedral back a single tile, which arguably I could do, it would, uh... We could put something else in there, but I guess this is a space where... I suppose I could just paint some concrete, and uh, we could do our own little thing in there. I actually like that a lot. I really do. Can I put you guys down here and uh, see what that looks like? I... Hmm. I think I prefer these being closer to the cathedral. And I think I prefer them sort of being that way around, sort of facing uh, the two avenues. But that, to me, looks kind of great. And the only thing it's really missing is uh, a bunch of bollards across the the front right here so from this spot right about there going to right about there we want to get ourselves some bollards now i'm gonna need to make sure that uh anarchy is on to let me do this which uh it was and it definitely got a bit weird down here at the end so just place a single bollard right there and that's nearly nearly seamless I'm so pleased with that. I think that looks so good. But you know what's going to look even better? I'll tell you what's going to look even better. Replacing every single building in Cedar Mall with, uh, well, replacing every single building with a wall-to-wall -wall style building. So that's, 
That's that's the next goal. That's the next step. But uh, first, let me just put another water tower right here, and let me give them another uh, another water treatment plant because that's a thing that they need. It can live. Uh, no, where can it live? Can it live there? It can live there. All right. Let's get you connected to everything. And now, the moment of truth. Now the moment of truth. <laughs> this is <laughs> this is going to be a terrible idea. I will tell you that right now. This is going to be a terrible idea because so much stuff is going to have to rebuild. Maybe, maybe we start with the commercial zoning. Since, uh, since the commercial zoning is perhaps going to be a little bit, uh, it, it should rebuild quicker. Well, no, it shouldn't. We have demand for everything, but we'll start with commercial. I'm, I'm a, <laughs> a little bit nervous about this. I'm going to be quite honest with you, but, um... Yeah, we'll do, we'll do commercial, and we'll see what happens. So, uh, let's get all of this, and all of this zoned. Ooh, not those bits in there, though. That would be terrible. Uh, so all of that zoned. All of this can be rezoned as well. These bits back here are service points, so those are fine. And I guess what we can do is... Oh, man, if I... Hmm... Now, here's what's going to happen. If I go in and I say wall-to-wall -wall commercial, that's okay. If I go and say wall-to-wall -wall residential, it's going to replace every building. So, residential needs to remain self-sufficient for now. But the commercial stuff, well, it can rebuild. I, you know what? <laughs> I might regret this. I really might regret this. I'm going to replace all the residential zoning as well. I want to see what this looks like when it's completely rebuilt. And uh, you know what else? We can go ahead and take all this out because I don't need it. And, uh, actually, I'm going to take this bit out as well, because that's going to be some kind of park. The rest of this is about to get rezoned. You know, I think it's safe to say that the comments that pointed out the fact that Cedar Mall would look much better if it had these wall-to-wall -wall buildings were correct. Completely and utterly correct. The only problem we're having right now, really, is the fact that there's not enough educated sims to work, essentially anywhere, inside of this district. But that's something that, with a bit of time, will get sorted out because I decided to go ahead and build a high-capacity elementary school right here, and across the street from it, a high-capacity high school as well. So we should have, also, we do have a bus stop between those, which I think is a really, really good place to have a bus stop. But hopefully, in no time at all, we'll see all of these complaints go away. And we just, we're, we're seeing some of them already vanish because we are getting educated sims in here. So I think it's safe to say that we have completely transformed once again Cedar Mall into something that looks a bit better, a bit more interesting, and a little bit more in line with what I was wanting it to be. I think the fact that we're now tying together all of the color of the plazas into the buildings makes this feel so wonderfully modern, and I, uh, I really, really enjoy how it looks, despite the fact that half of it's abandoned right now. We'll not, uh, <laughs> we'll not worry too much about the fact that, uh, chunks of it are abandoned or being abandoned. Because this is progress. We are above 8,000 people. Our next goal is 10,000 people when we get trains and monorails and cable cars. And, uh, I'm looking forward to all of that. I've got to be honest. I'm really, really looking forward to all of it. I was actually thinking that we should start looking into Metro as soon as possible, and possibly even trams. I think trams going through a pedestrian area would be wonderful. I also think a little bit of extra power might be uh, might be wonderful as well. So we'll go ahead and get a second power plant down here, and that'll keep everyone happy in terms of power. Uh, everyone will get workers eventually, and I think bringing trams through here, I think bringing the Metro through here, I think bringing a lot of things through here will make this a really interesting looking uh, city center. And actually, I suppose what I'll say is uh, let me know in the comments below. Trams or metro lines? 
I know which one I'm leaning towards, but I'm not going to tell you because I'm curious to see what your opinion is on which one would fit this space better. So yeah, leave your answers in the comments below. I'm going to leave it there for today. Thank you so much for watching. It's been an absolute pleasure as always. And as always, I'll see you next time. Bye bye